this age and the age to come. The righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Today we're continuing to look at Jonathan Ammon's book, The Power of His Reign. Uh, essentially today we'll just be finishing uh, a short study we began last week looking at Matthew chapter 13. So in between the two passages we looked at last week in Matthew 13 sits the parable of the mustard seed in verses 31 and 32. So let me read from Matthew 13, again, verses 31 and 32. He presented another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a man took and sowed in his field. It's the smallest of all the seeds, but when grown, it's taller than the garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds of the sky come and nest in its branches. So similar to what we see with the parable of the weeds, the seed here is the kingdom in this current age. The seed grows until the second coming of Christ will bring about the age to come. And then when it's fully grown, the seed becomes a very large tree. Uh, many have connected this to Nebuchadnezzar's dream in Daniel chapter 4. Uh, there, Nebuchadnezzar dreams of a large tree that covers the whole earth. In that dream, the birds are the nations who rest on the branches. So Christ has promised to build his church, and we can expect him to do so among the nations in this age. Then, in verse 33, we see the parable of the leaven. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven, that a woman took and mixed into 50 pounds of flour until all of it was leavened. So again, the kingdom arrives in this present age and it grows until everything is changed in the age to come. So just like last week, we saw this already but not yet idea. Now we skip down to verse 44. Again, still in Matthew chapter 13. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure buried in a field that a man found and reburied. Then in his joy, he goes and sells everything he has and buys that field. So the kingdom, again, is now in this age, but it is hidden. Those who discover it, God's elect, are full of joy and take great pleasure in being a part of the kingdom. Verses 45 and 46. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. When he found one priceless pearl, he went and sold everything he had and bought it. So man is searching for fine pearls. He's searching now in the kingdom. So when the kingdom finds what it's looking for, when the Son of Man finds what it's looking for, it will do whatever it can to obtain it. It's just like in Luke chapter 19, the Son of Man came to seek and save that which was lost. Christ must acquire his people, those the Father gave to him before the foundation of the world. And then lastly here, verses 47 through 50. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a large net thrown into the sea. It collected every kind of fish, and when it was full, they dragged it ashore, sat down, and gathered the good fish into containers, but threw out the worthless ones. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out, separate the evil people from the righteous, and throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So in this age, the now, we see the arrival of the kingdom in a fishing phase that includes both good and bad. The same idea we saw last week in the difference between this age and the age to come. So after the fishing phase, we see a gathering phase. The resurrection and the judgment will bring about the age to come. So again, this age here, consists of a mixture on the earth in the kingdom. 
but judgment will come at the end of the age to usher in the age to come. So as we've seen here in the parables uh, from Jesus, the meaning is not complex. Uh, a lot of simplicity, and yet it's all packed with an important message. And there is a focus, as we've seen, from Jesus on the end times. 